Okay, so now I'd like to talk about work. What is work? It is a force exerted over a distance. Work can be calculated as F times D times the cosine of theta. And I want to be really clear here that F is the magnitude of the force vector. Okay, well, any force vector that you might choose, but it's the magnitude of that force. So it doesn't have a direction. The force has direction, but the F in this equation does not have direction because it's just the magnitude. It's just how large the force is. Similarly, D is the magnitude of the displacement vector. Okay, displacement has a direction. And by the way, displacement was symbolized with delta x and delta y in chapters two and three. But here, as a lot of textbooks do, our textbook is defining the symbol d to be the displacement. Well, specifically the magnitude of the displacement. And then theta is the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. So f and d are both going to be positive values. However, when we take the cosine of the angle, we can get a number anywhere between negative 1 and positive 1. It could be 0, it could be 0 0.5, negative 0.6, any of those values between negative 1 and 1. So the work itself can be negative. Positive work means that we're putting uh, energy into the system, and it, that happens when at least part of the force is in the same direction as the displacement. Negative work, on the other hand, happens when at least part of the force is in the opposite direction to the displacement, and that causes the energy in the system to decrease. All right, drawing a work diagram. Now, this is not a free body diagram. It's a work diagram. So this is new. And so just take a moment to understand the steps involved. We're going to draw an arrow that represents the displacement vector. And we're going to make sure that we draw the arrow in the actual direction the object's moving. Sometimes people will take uh, an object and they're like, oh yeah, it's on an incline, but I'm just going to draw it like it's moving horizontally. Don't do that. Go ahead and draw it the actual direction it moves. And then draw an arrow to represent the force in the actual direction of the force. Okay, so whatever direction you would draw that force on a free body diagram, draw it just like that same direction on your work diagram. It could be that the displacement and force vectors are in the exact same direction, in which case they're going to overlap each other. Okay, but they won't necessarily overlap each other. You just have to see for each thing. Then you're going to label what the angle is between the two vectors. So if they overlap each other, that's a zero degree angle. However, they might be at a 90 degree angle, could be a 30 degree angle, 60, 55. There's all kinds of different angles that it could be, and you just label what it actually is based on the diagram that was provided to you or the description that was provided to you, and so on. And then you're going to do a separate work diagram for each force for which you're calculating work. Okay, so those are the steps in drawing a work diagram. And now we're going to look at some examples. And for this, I'd like to go to the document camera, and this will take me just a moment to get set up. And then we, you can see uh, as I work through these examples. Now, you should be able to see example one, which is for a box pushed horizontally to the right with a force of 10 newtons for three meters. Step one, draw the displacement vector. It has a magnitude of three meters and draw the force vector. That is 10 newtons. And so these are overlapping. Calculate the work, which we use capital W, as opposed to lowercase w, which stood for the weight. And so 10 newtons 
times three meters times the cosine, and I forgot to label it, but they're overlapping, so it's zero degrees, and the cosine of zero degrees, that's equal to one. So I can do this one in my head, no calculator needed, 10 times three is 30, multiply that by one, and I get 30. Now the units, it's newtons times meters, and that is a joule. So that's a definition. One newton meter is defined to be the same as one joule. And that is our unit of both work and energy. Let's go on to another example where we have a box pushed horizontally to the right, also with a force of one newton, but it doesn't move. So it's on some rough surface. Maybe it's sitting on your front lawn, which has lots of friction because of, of the grass. And in this case, it doesn't move at all. So the displacement is zero. So we can't really draw a displacement vector because it doesn't go anywhere. And so let's skip drawing the work diagram and just do the calculation. So the work is equal to F, which I could fill in, but I don't need to because it's something times zero times something. And regardless of what the first and third things are, that's going to come out to zero. All right, so that's a case where you can push all you want, but if you're only pushing with a force of 10 newtons and it's not moving, then the work is going to be zero. Okay, so the object has to have displacement for there to be any work. All right, let's go to another example. Here we have somebody pulling on a box, and let's say there's a rope here, and the person's pulling at an angle. How much work do they do? Well, the box is going to move horizontally across the floor. The box isn't going to, to be flying up into the air. The person's just dragging it along. So the displacement is three meters to the right, but the force is exerted right along that rope. So the force here, the tension, is 10 newtons. And then the angle here is 30 degrees. Same equation, work equals FD cosine theta. Work equals 10 newtons times three meters times the cosine of the angle between those. And so the cosine of 30 degrees is 0 0.866. They don't need to memorize that. I'm just showing you how it varies from one case to the next. And then we can calculate the work. So 30 times 10, I'm sorry, 10 times three is 30, and then 30 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And so that comes out to 26.0 joules. So you can see the work done in this case was less than in example one. In example one, the work came out to 30 joules, even though the force and the displacement were the same, here the work done is less because the force is less. Okay. So the objects still move three meters, but the work done was less. And well, what does that really mean? Well, it means at the end of that three meters, this box isn't going to be moving as fast as this box. More kinetic energy will have been put into this box than the one in example three. All right, let's look at example four. The box in example three moves at a constant velocity while the man pulls. How much work does the friction do on the block? So in this particular instance, let's draw a free body diagram first. There is a normal force. There's the man pulling. There is the weight of the block. There is a kinetic friction because the, the box is moving. And then let's draw a work diagram. Now we already drew a work diagram for the tension or the man's force, but let's draw a work diagram for the friction because, oops, wrong symbol, F sub K. I started to do it the other way around. Um, so we're, we're analyzing the friction here. So the displacement well, it's moving three meters to the right, 
but the friction force is to the left. Now what's the angle between those? That is a 180 degree angle. So to calculate this, we're going to need to know the size of the force of friction, and then we're going to put in the displacement and the angle. So to find out how big the force of friction is, we're going to call this our positive x direction, and we're going to use Newton's second law, which we learned about in chapter four. So in the positive x direction, we have 10 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees. And in the negative x direction, we have all of fk. Now, what's the acceleration in this case? Take a look. It says it's moving at a constant velocity. It doesn't tell us how fast it's moving, but if it's a constant velocity, we know the acceleration is zero. So fk is equal to 8.66 newtons. Now we can take that value and put it in there. So the work is equal to 8.66 newtons times 3 meters times the cosine of 180 degrees. So we're not putting in this angle, we're not putting in 30, we're putting in this angle from our work diagram. Now we're going to calculate this. Now the cosine of 180 degrees, our calculator tells us that that is negative 1. So 8.66 times 3 gives us 26.0. Okay. The units are joules. And I messed up. Actually, negative 26.0. Sorry about that. Um, so 8.66 times 3 is 26, but times cosine of 180 gives us a work done by the friction of negative 26 joules, which is the same size as the amount of energy, I'm sorry, the amount of work done by the man's force or the tension, as we were calling it. Okay. Let's do one more example. Look at a mover pushing on a piece of furniture with a 200 Newton force. He's pushing parallel to this ramp here, and the ramp is two meters long, and the angle is 25 degrees. And you can see that I misspelled horizontal, but I think we can still go on. How much work does the mover do? Let's draw a work diagram for the mover's force. All right. So we start by drawing the displacement. Which way is the piece of furniture going to move? It's going to move up the ramp like that. So we draw that in. The displacement is two meters. And which way does the person push? He pushes this way. So what is the angle between those two vectors? Is it a 25 degree angle? No, it is definitely not. The angle between this force and this displacement is zero degrees. And so now we can easily calculate the work. The work is equal to 200 newtons times two meters times the cosine of zero degrees. Remember, cosine of zero is one, and you don't have to remember that, but you may, and it's helpful to know just because it's this idea that that's the, that's the most work you can get is if you apply the force in the same direction as the displacement. And so that is a work of 400 joules. The main thing that I want you to take away from this is that we didn't use that 25 degrees. And the reason we knew to do that is because we drew a work diagram. With the work diagram, it becomes very clear that the angle between the force and the displacement is zero degrees.